<laughs> well, we had to wait on Rich. He had to get a haircut today, so. Yeah. Well, Paul, Paul Jobs for the late start. All right, David. Hey, Mark, after the uh, after the COVID update, can you just talk about the challenges that uh, uh, Kyler Murray Kyler Murray poses to your defense? Well, I mean, Kyler, Kyler. Well, the you want? I'm sorry. What'd you say about the COVID? Really don't have any COVID updates. Uh, yeah, n nothing on the uh, COVID list today. Um, but as far as Kyler Murray, just uh, you know, tremendous talent. I mean, you think the the way he plays the game of football, you know, from the quarterback position, he's dynamic, uh, both in the pocket, out of the pocket, um, so quick and fast and uh, twitchy with you know with his decision making. So. Well, it's, a, it's a dynamic offense, and uh, it's definitely a, a big threat uh, when he comes in here Sunday. Frankly, that's that's where I was. So we're trying to work through that uh, because even with the guys coming back uh, on a new role, uh, there still has to be a um, you know a meeting between you know, you know Jim, our trainer. And just to make sure that there's no symptoms and things like that. But you know, we all understand now with the with the new five day criteria. But you know, you still got to make sure there's no symptoms. So that's that's kind of what we're working through right now. We don't start practice. We have practice day at noon, so we're with the virtual we're a little later than we would be in a normal week. You guys can have a lot of success with tempo uh, Sunday. You get the offense jump started again. Is it difficult to make adjustments to the offense? You, neither or. I mean, you, you can start with tempo. You can you can do it in the flow of the game. Um, so I mean, there's there's different types of tempo uh, packages that that we utilize. And um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a a weapon uh, when it when it goes well for you. Mike, how much time did you spend with John Madden in, in his lifetime, and what would you say his legacy is for the game of football? Oh boy, he he left. John Madden left a huge. Uh, footprint on the game of football. Um, I, I think like any coach or anybody in the NFL, you, you remember the first time uh, you meet uh, Coach Matt. And, and, and I remember I um, had a chance to do a production meeting uh, with him and Pat Summerall uh, when I was with the Saints, uh, New Orleans Saints as offensive coordinator. And it's, I mean, still today, we'll, you know, it's it's a production meeting you never forget. Um, you know, you're, 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 you know, you're sitting in a room with these two legends. and. Um, but uh, Coach Madden would ask you a significant, significant amount of questions, a lot of very detailed questions about your fourth receiver, you know, you know who's your third tackle. And it, it, it almost got to a point where, you know, you, you felt like you were in an interview. So just extremely detailed. You can see, you know, you can see why he was uh, so great at, at what he did in, in, the, in the broadcasting booth um, because, you know, his preparation was unparalleled. Um, but then, you know, later in my head coaching career, uh, I had the privilege of being on the on the Madden Madden coaches committee, and, and that was that was really cool uh, because you can really you could get to hear his passion for the game of football. Uh, there was always you know there was always topics that would come up. You know whether whether it was you know the way the game was trending, and I can remember particularly after. Um, after I think it was the 2011 uh, CBA, where you know because he's an old offensive line coach, so he had, he had such a strong passion for for offensive line play, and and he just felt that the offensive linemen were at such a disadvantage uh, because they weren't able to able to train in you know in the off season program uh, because you know just to be able to do all that work without any pads and so forth. So I mean, he just you know his passion and his detail for for the game of football was was unparalleled. So as a uh, you know, just to just to be part of that, and just to be able to you know hear his input and all that was a was truly a privilege. Mike, with Frank Spinard's uh, injury, how hard is it to go find a linebacker at this time of year? That guy that's either in shape, knows what you want to do. What's that process like? Um, uh, you know, excellent question. Um, it's. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's part of the the process of our personnel department. So I mean, they're always looking, uh, you know, at those types of things position wise. But you know, we also we're we're really also trusting our you know our roster development. So you know, we have guys here in the building, um, so that we'll continue to work whether it's special teams or you know diver diversifying how we uh, you know how we you know 
you know, fill that void there and, and obviously at the linebacker position. So, you know, something you continue to work through. And uh, But, you know, once again, we, we have a number of guys here. We feel really good about our practice squad guys. And, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's really part of that grind that you, you have to be on top of. So. Do you need a, a linebacker just for number's sake? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we're, we're definitely you know, looking at uh, guys, and um, you know, may have a prospect here showing up real quickly. Uh, I got two real quick. Uh, how much do you expect Tyron to do uh, today, or even this week? Um, you know, we're we're in a lighter Wednesday um, type practice today, so um, I would expect you know Tyron to be at a mem at a minimum limited to full. Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence developed. Seems that they're becoming closer uh, as they, you know, go through this journey with you together. Um, yeah, definitely. I think you know, just like anything, I know it was, it was tough on Demarcus to be away with the foot injury, uh, but you know, obviously his impact has has been felt um, since 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 he's back in it full full time. And I think you know, just you know, Micah and, and Demarcus and Randy. I mean, really, I'll be honest. That, that whole defensive group is. Is very tight, you know, and it's uh, it's 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 a group that is uh, you know, their confidence and their belief just continues to grow. So, and, and I think it's like anything, you know, now that we're able to, you know, we're getting healthy, um, we're, we're really playing in a really good rhythm. Um, the connections, uh, it, it's been fun to watch, but you know, but like anything, I, I think they all realize too. We have we have more to more to give, and and I, and I think it's been it's been cool to see the. You know the vet and the rookie, you know, uh, come together like that. But I, I think you're seeing that throughout the whole defense. Well, we're realizing that your COVID list can change. Um, the uh, wow, that's beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah, guys are mixing up players on COVID list or your practice squad, as well as losing Justin Hamilton from your practice squad. How um, at all does it change right now with the COVID list and the practice squad? Well, it's uh, you know, not today, Michael. I, I think we'll be fine today because of the mode we're in. Uh, we'll be in shells tomorrow, uh, so uh, that, that that'll be the the challenge more in the look teams. So I mean, it's just you know more guys will have to roll around. But yeah, I, I don't think we have a a workload capacity challenge there. You know, we 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 still feel good about our numbers to to, to execute and have a a very effective practice. Uh, frankly, just keep uh, watching the science of this and, and the protocols. And you know, the goal is to, to get back together, even if you know, in within the protocols, even if it's you know, with the social distancing and, and so forth. And uh, you know, as we did last year, you know, I think you know our facility gives us you know flexibility because we we do have the space and the square footage. Uh, so the goal would be eventually maybe to get back to that next week, but you know we'll, we'll see how it goes this week. Um, but that, that's that's kind of what I've been doing administratively with the extra conversations, and, and really the nine o'clock meeting today was important uh, just to give us some clarity on the direction. So we'll be in virtual, you know, all this week. But if we can get back to the social distancing format that we used last year, it would be the preferred. Um, and we'll see if, what that brings us next week. And if we, and if we don't go to that, we'll, we'll obviously just stay in the virtual format. And have you all felt the need to isolate or separate like quarterbacks, for example, or sort of or any other position I mean, we, we've, we've talked about the different scenarios. Uh, but you know, I think, frankly, you know, being in the virtual format that we've been in and, and just you know seeing our numbers, I mean, I mean, Jim Maurer's done an, an outstanding job. I mean, he's our point person on all the COVID protocols and, you know, his the communication with the players and, and so forth. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, it's these last two weeks, you know, the way our numbers in particularly have gone that, uh, you know, hopefully we're in front of this challenge. So, uh, but yes, I mean, as far as, you know, uh, you know, any, any sign of, you know, like Will Greer, Will Greer had a sniffle, so we we put him out of the room. Uh, you know, virtually. So yeah, so we're very cognizant of, of you know the position groups and just being smart with everybody. But it's really the the personal 
focus is, is the most important. You know, I, I think what we're doing here, as far as our time together, you know, outside of being on the practice field, you know, in the locker room is, you know, the way it's set up. You know, I feel like we're we're doing a really good job here, but you know, it's everybody's personal space, and and, and I think our guys have done an excellent job with the family and friends testing and trying to make their their home space as safe as possible. Mike, you know, you mentioned earlier about what you like or you've noticed about Kyle Murray. I was wondering how much are you looking forward to see your defense go against a player like Kyler Murray? He's obviously on a a different level than the quarterback you faced recently, and he's more of a quarterback like what you're going to see in the postseason. Just how much are you looking forward to seeing how you guys match up against a guy like that? Yeah, I, I, I think it, the key word you said was postseason. I mean, this is a postseason football team, and he's a a postseason you know caliber quarterback. I mean, he's dynamic. He brings you know unique challenge uh, because of his ability to to move um, and and throw the ball to any you know quadrant of the field. So, and has such a quick release and, and can really spin it. So. And that's, you know, and that, this is what, you know, it's January. So it's January football, and, and it, these are the kind of games that are, that are privileged to play in. But this is what we've been working for since April. So um, that time's upon us. And I know, you know, to a man, we're, we're excited about this opportunity. Uh, this is opportunity to get to 12 wins. And, you know, they're fighting for advancement in the playoff seeds, and it's no different for us. So I think it'll be a heck of a contest Sunday. Okay, did you? Um, oh, Buda Baker, yeah, dynamic. Um, I think his, you know, really his ability. He's, I would maybe call him the X factor of their defense. You know, I think his ability to, to pressure, uh, plays with it. You know, tremendous energy. You know, uh, the break. They got a number of guys that really do a great ball, great, great job of ball extraction, taking the ball away. You know, anticipation on the, uh, on the interceptions, interceptions. You know, particularly the way they match coverages. But um, you know, both their safeties I think are impressive. But boot. You know, I would definitely say Baker is an impact player. Mike, now that Jacksonville has uh, reached out and gotten permission for, for Kellen Moore and Dan Quinn, can you talk a little bit about? how they'll handle their responsibilities this week. And, and I know you mentioned earlier about an interview you would prefer to be after a Thursday, just kind of where that stands to your understanding. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just, just a little conversation I've had, and it's frankly, I, I think these questions are better suited for Dan and Kellen. But, you know, I, I think as long as, you know, common sense, and I, I think that's that's definitely in place here. So, um, you know, they're both been working the same hours and are committed to the game plan and so forth. And, you know, in, in whatever time is designated, I'm sure it'll be in the common sense mode. And, and um, you know, if it, if it takes place and, uh, as we move forward, and I'm sure this won't be the, the first time we're talking about it. But, you know, the specifics of it, I think that's more for Dan and Kellen to talk about. But, you know, I, I don't think it's, you know, I don't see this being a, any type of interference in our preparation. Well, uh, we've looked at all the games. I mean, I thought it was very impressive what the Colts did in that game, especially, you know, the number of guys that lost going in the game and then, you know, to lose a couple more in, in, during the game. So, yeah, definitely. I, I think it's uh, it's important, uh, really, both the run and the pass and probably protection even more so because the amount of scheme. I mean, we're going to see the different personnel groupings defensively. They play an extra linebacker, three, four uh, package that you know we haven't seen in a while. So I mean, schematically, this is definitely a bigger challenge uh, from a volume uh, standpoint than we've had, you know, in quite some time. So that's really what we're focused on. And you know, at the end of the day, we you know we feel like we've been running the ball, you know, effectively, and, and definitely would like to take a you know take another step and you know as we move forward. But this, you know, they present a huge challenge both from a personnel standpoint and a schematic. You know, standpoint. Two questions tonight. The first is I don't think we checked on Monday if there were any injuries coming out of the game. So, do you have any injuries to report um, from the? I mean, I think we talked about Francis. Um, you know, his he had a groin injury, so uh, that's really the only thing really coming out of the coming out of the game. What was the second question? I'm sorry. And the second question is I know you talked about Kyler's ability to escape the pocket and extend the play. 
How is he similar or different than some of the other quarterbacks you guys have faced who can do that? Well, um, you know, I, I think like anything, I, I think him and Cliff, you know, uh, you know the, the schemes that they do run, um, you know, the, the, the ability to go up tempo. Um, but I mean, his his you know his his extended play tape is is, is pretty dr you know pretty dramatic. I mean, we had one today where we showed it was 13 seconds. So I mean, his you know, and, and he can run, but but he's even quicker and. But um, you know, but also what's so impressive is the ability to make the throws from different arm slots, different body positions, and, and he can he can really spin it. So, uh, so everybody's alive. Um, you know, this is definitely going to be a a space challenge um, in which which we're excited about. Um, so yeah, it's uh, he's definitely unique in his ability to to move. But you know, he he can still make any throw in the book. Mike, I got two for you as well. Uh, back on John Madden for a second. Do you think your players know him as a coach? Do they remember him at all as a coach? As a coach? Well, that's a great. That's a great question. But I, I would say they do because. Uh, um, you know, our, our players, uh, and I think it's, you know, today's NFL, these guys are very much in tune with history. And, and you know, anytime there's a, an, an old nostalgic uh, movie or something like that, I'm, I'm definitely surprised on how many guys do know. But yeah, I definitely would think they would they'd recognize Coach Madden as a, you know, the former Raiders coach. And my, my last one for you is uh, with your quality control guys, have you started to have them looking at playoff teams yet to? Get early breakdowns on who you may or may maybe playing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's you know that's definitely part of it, and you know Ben McAdoo is also part of that process too. So yeah, you know, our our future you know uh, reports and we're definitely get be getting them cranked up here you know this week and next week. Okay. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you.